on, my dudes. Thanks for hanging out and drinking with two dudes and a mic. I'm, of course, Mike. And as always, I'm sitting across from my favorite dude, Gus. What is going on today, man? Oh, we got a pretty good show. We got uh, good guests in the studio. We got some beers to drink. That is true. I'm very thirsty. The pre show beers did not cut it. No. I need more. I need more. Yes, so in studio today, we have a uh, rock star in here. We got a fitness man, a family man. He's a podcaster, an author, a musician. <sighs> I'm out of breath just from his job titles. We, uh, we've got uh, the uh, the guitar player for the Age of Wolves, the front man of Gypsy Chief Goliath, Al the Yeti Bones in the studio. How you doing, buddy? How's it going, guys? Good, man. Good. We are ready to do these show shots. So the way we do things here, I know you were, you were on the last show, so you kind of know how we run things here. But for everybody listening, we're going to do a shot at the beginning of the show. We do one at the end, and then we just drink a lot of beer throughout the show. I was a fly on the wall that last time, yeah. and uh, watching how you guys did this uh, really inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are happy that you came back. Uh, at least we didn't scare you off. So here we go. So we're drinking uh, the Smirnoff raspberry vodka because we need to get rid of it. Yeah, we got to finish this bottle Because off. they're out of the grapefruit, and that's what I like. So here we go. So Al, that one's yours. So you grab that one. These are really full, guys. All right, so all the dudes listening, dudes, dudettes, here we go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 It's so smooth, though. That's the problem. Ah. It's so easy. Ah. So now we do a beer crack, except uh, I've got a Corona, and I got... <laughs> there you go. You got your honest lager. I popped. I'm going to try and open this bottle cap. There we oh, go. All right. And if uh, Chuck Mady was here, he'd just be- <laughs> <laughs> right. he would just rip it off with his fucking dude face. That was, that was intense. Yeah, that was. That was pretty cool, though. That was crazy. Yeah. You know what the original plan was? The original plan was to do the show with you right after. But so we were so drunk. Yeah, I, I heard. I heard it through the grapevine that that may happen. Um, and I, I just told. I, to, I told DJ. I was like, I, yeah. dude, like, let me just go and see this thing i want to see like what what the hell this is and uh we can swear right oh yeah oh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah so i want i want to see what the fuck there you go this shit's <laughs> about because when uh, like i said last week like uh when he was when the when the, when the title of it was all about ripping these cans open the, my first inkling is not to see the uh, like a like a, a savage just <laughs> tear into this like unopened can you know yeah. Yeah, multiple times that <laughs> is true. the speed like the speed and ease just like you bit into it and just ripped it right off like it was nothing yeah it's like it didn't even phase him yeah it's it was weird it's like i don't know it's like just opening up a jar of something he just did it with his mouth yeah it's so weird yeah. and then pop was everywhere soda whatever pepsi whatever you call it <laughs> yeah that was a big cleanup i was oh not expecting God. I was not expecting that soft drinks all over the we seal. were yeah. like earlier around we we're walking around the studio earlier and we we're sticking to the floor yeah like, no it's, it's still, still sticky. sticky yeah that's yeah it's gonna be sticky for a while so that's why we're glad that you came back and we didn't scare you off yeah I'm glad to be I'm glad to be here. Because <laughs> that was kind of a, a weird night, that's for sure. So Gypsy Chief, man. Yeah. How's that going? Gypsy Chief is good. Uh, we just started to rehearse again. Uh, we we rehearse in London, so it it becomes very uh, problematic sometimes trying to get everybody coordinated to one spot like that. Why do you do it up there? Just because their drummers from Toronto, oh, okay. so it's just like a central place. Me and him. When we started, we were both living in London at the time, so it made sense, and you know, and then we just kind of kept it London being central. Uh, we would drive up separately from the Windsor Boys, and then you yeah. know, a buddy from Toronto would come, and we'd meet in uh, London and do it for about three, four hours, and then head home. We just started getting back in there recently, and just you know, I started playing guitar again. Nice, and uh, yeah, so when we initially. Every few years, I start getting reminded that we're going to, you know, have to put out another record soon, yeah. you know? So yeah. I start writing again, but it's like, okay, hey, like, we got to start fucking writing again. Like, we got to put something else out now. Because, like, my whole thing was always, like, I wanted uh, an album every two years, uh, a tour every year. The tour thing kind of went out the window once kids came into play and like you yeah, know was... then they started to kind of go a little more uh sparse yeah you know only like you just wanted to do the, uh, the things that made sense you know you didn't want to leave aimlessly for no reason and uh we started looking at uh possibilities to where we're going to do the tracking for the drums this year and we had i had like you know ideas just like ideas of songs riffs you know and, and grooves and whatnot um you know, stuff that I was planning on rolling out for the guys, but uh, shit kind of hit the fan. And then once we were all in, locked in, and uh, I just went downstairs in the basement and I started kind of demoing out all this material at the beginning of all this. 
And once that uh, started to become a little more clear of like what our future was going to kind of look like from day to day, I decided, okay, I'm going to just, I'm going to put this stuff together myself. I probably can't call it Gypsy Chief. That's, that'd be wrong. So it's like, uh, fuck, I'm going to do something else. And I I just uh, ended up calling it Conduit Beast. And so that, uh, I have like eight or nine new songs that are ready to go. Like they're in the can. They're going to be put up on like Bandcamp and all streaming platforms uh, pretty soon. But I'm trying to like at least shop options and see if I can, you know, perhaps pull a record label out of my ass and, you know, somehow you <laughs> right, know, yeah. get it out there, yeah. you know, released a little with a little more distribution and, and worldwide presence. Right. Know. And then was doing a band called Age of Wolves. Uh, we had started back uh, last September or something. It was myself and the three guys who had been fired from a band. Uh, they would left, you know, uh, yeah. resigned. So I don't know. There right. was like some some shit went down with them. Yeah. And uh, and then they called me and said like, hey man, like you want to jam sometime? And I was like, you know, your old bands. Like I was such big fans of that stuff that like this would be like a bucket list jam yeah. for me. You know, like really wanted to like you know get into a room with these guys and they're all older. And, you know, I'm for the once, like, well, second time in my life, I'm the youngest <laughs> in, in the band. And, and when I am, it's like, it's deadly because I learn so much from these guys and I pick up so much from, from what they're putting down. You, know, you have a positive. really rich history in the music industry, though. Yeah. Like, it's very colorful. It's very, yeah, yeah. very padded, we'll say. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. Uh, it, it, but it's, it's one of those things where I think I had a lot of promise early on. You know, and really had nothing to like uh, to lose, right? You know, to go for it. Yeah. But then, then once um, people around me started to kind of like fall and drop like flies, yeah. kind of stuff, yeah. it was like you lose, you know, something that like was bringing you to the dance in the first place. You know, every time you lose somebody else and like someone else like uh, quits or you know goes into recovery and like you know is completely changing their life in a different direction, uh, a part of you know what that identity of that band was and who who all made that group what it was alters it changes yeah. to a point and there's you see that what time and time again it's everybody's changing everybody's growing up and everybody's kind of evolving yeah. and, and life starts to enter the fray nothing stays the same nothing yeah. nothing yeah but, but navigating like being a uh, touring musician with a family like mm-hmm. that's that's got to be impossible uh, it is yeah. i think so like i mean the guys there's guys in the band that have full-time jobs you know and maybe not like the same kind of cemented roots of family but their full-time job is dictating you know the amount of stress they can they can kind of yeah go and afford to like leave and, right. and hit the hit the trail right, right. so you got to try and like coordinate four or five schedules so to go in a tour a fucking wreck yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's like that's insane you know but them all having these schedules and all having you know jobs and lives and and you know everything else but it's like now you know, cut the numbers down into, you know, four guys in a van and it's a dude who, you know, like a few years removed from like, you know, a band that was like filled with like alcoholics and, you know, it's like, like right. now we're trying to like, you know, make this plan work, you know, <laughs> right. make this yeah. tour work and right. this routing and stuff. And, you know, the record labels mentioning, you know, like, hey, are we good? Is everything good? It's like, yeah, no dates are booked, but <laughs> you don't need to know that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's awesome. Like, we just, uh, you know, well, when's the date start? You know, when can we can we put something on the website? Can we to make it easier? Something? Do you ever think of like bringing your kids with you? No, no, no. no. I we it ended up I thought that this was going to be a lot easier, but it ended up being a fucking nightmare, too, was uh, our last show before the big break. And then COVID is we had a big break during uh like the holidays right you know that's like what we were breaking for was well of course you know just yeah yeah and so the last show was we were headlining a like a festival in montreal a two-day stoner doom stoner rock doom festival in in montreal yeah and uh i hate the drive like now we've driven from like halifax home you know in one shot before you know like Hold been denied on. at the Jesus. border like Brutal. you know it was denied at the border in uh maine no and, and yeah, and like, uh, and then went hit like sushi somewhere, and like pissed and moaned for a bit, and said like, "All right, well, we got to go home." The like, whole Canadian side. Yeah, so so Ooh. we drove we drove all the way home, and uh, so like the Montreal thing, like, is just the drive is so ingrained in my head, and uh, you know when we were, when we're done playing, we always just pack up and leave and go home so that we can spend the Sunday, you know, with the family, right? You know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's it's things have changed now, you know, they're they're different. But uh, we played this festival, and I flew. 
I chose to fly. Okay. And then I know our other guitar player uh, flew as well. Um, right. He had like, uh, he's got like uh, like business that he had to do in Montreal anyway. So it was like, you know what? I'm going to stay an extra day. Yeah. It's all good. And uh, so he flew too. And then the other guys uh, kind of drove up separately, you know, and uh, everybody kind of drove up in different vehicles and it was just kind of, you know, it was what it was. But uh, I think by the end we were like very burnt out trying to avoid each other maybe a little more and more and uh, just kind of do the job and then go home, be with the family and live separate lives for a while. Uh, We were just like, I think we prematurely jumped the gun, you know, where we decided like, you know, this was going to be our last show for a little bit. We're going to take a break and, you know, then start working on a new album and then we're going to do a new album, uh, you know, then we're going to actually like go record it and then uh, everything was going to fall into place, blah, 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 blah. Then fucking COVID hit <laughs> and then it was just like everything kind of fell off the rails. Yeah. Right. But me knowing my own personality and do, dealing with what I had dealt with a couple of years prior with like the whole like the fitness change and like, you know, the lifestyle change and, and ketogenics. And, uh, you know, once once all that started to kind of enter the fray back then, I realized like this mindset I have is is a little different. Like I can I can really uh, use this discipline and kill it. So, um, so spe- staying change, in, staying in. Change of topics here. Uh, you're talking about keto. Mm-hmm. So you're eating a lot of like meat now. Because I know. So we've talked about this actually last show. I don't know yeah. if you were in studio yet at that mm-hmm. time. I don't remember. Um, but uh, I was listening to Joe Rogan talk, and he was saying that he's only eating meat right now. Yeah. yeah. So nothing diet. else, right? Yeah. Like no carbs and very little vegetables and stuff. Um, yeah. I'm starting to get back into it. I, when I went to go see my brother, you know, last year, I was doing the same thing. It lost a ton of weight in a very short amount of time. What'd you do? Uh, keto is just basically like, yeah. um, well, it's called NSNG. So it's not oh, yeah, really okay. keto, but it's just no sugar, no grains. Yeah. So nothing with added sugar yep. and nothing with processed grains. Mm-hmm. So I could still eat grains and stuff. It's not a big deal and seeds and whatever. Mm-hmm. But if it's processed like a pasta or bread or something, yeah. then no. And nothing with added sugar. So sugar's fine. Strawberries, whatever, cherries, yeah. that's all good. Um, low sugar. That's low sugar. Yeah, yeah exactly. Anything yeah. low GI. Uh, I dropped like 21 pounds in a, just just over a month. Yeah. Just from working out crazy um, and just eating that that crazy That'll guy. do it. But Joe Rogan's talking about like the insane energy burst he's getting from just eating meat. Carnivore, yeah. So is that, are you kind of following no. the same? No? No. What no, do you that, keep that, your carbs to? Uh, 20 grams or less. Okay. Like on a good day. Right. Like, How yeah. many are in those Michelobes? Uh, about three. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So six, six tonight, six mm. tonight. <laughs> no, that's I'll it. have a few more. <laughs> <laughs> I think vodka negates the carbs actually from the because the alcohol. Yeah, yeah, there's there's zero carbs right. in in, in it that. Dehydrates. It's like it. negative carbs, so it cancels out the well, carbs from the beer. Not negative, Absolutely, but yeah. It's, Absolutely. Like, it's like celery. It's the celery of alcohol. Actually, we totally missed that whole part of our show. So we we always do the shot and then do our, our beer cracks or whatever, and then we ask the guests like, "What are you drinking? What do you normally mm. drink?" Just Michelob Ultra and that's it. Vodka. And vodka, and yeah. vodka, yeah. So like uh, heavy on tour, you're in the middle of a, you know. No, so the tour stuff that all happened before that was I was whatever I was a savage, right? I was <laughs> just drinking. No, I was the worst. Yeah, like just the worst. So absolute oh. fucking maniac. Like get to the bar, like just start drinking from the moment it opens. Just like grab the tap. So like just, before oh, yeah. your show. Oh yeah. So you go up and you're still like oh, tipsy the worst. drunk. Yeah. 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 Nice. Me and me and me and Steve both like yeah. we were like the worst, the worst <laughs> for it. Just, just That's like, insane. like, but it was, you know, we were both, uh, two of like, like, like the same kind of, the same kind of part, like the same kind of mentality, right? Yeah. Like, you know, so it was, it was very dangerous for us to be on tour together, you know, but, um, you know, we, we, so you've we come managed, down. we managed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah. So what do you, now what's your go-to? Uh, well, like it's the, it's the Michelob Ultra and the vodkas. Like, is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah drinks? That's what you drink normally? Yeah. That's my Like you're sitting at home watching yeah. Netflix. Mm, I wouldn't, yeah, it'd be like water, or coffee or tea or something. But, uh, like this stuff is all just very sparingly now. Um, but lately it's been more and more. So like, it doesn't count, you know, do, until we go full open in the province, none of this counts. Just so you know, it's all quarantine. It's beers. quarantine beers. Yeah. They don't count. Doesn't right. count. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So feel free to drink as many as you right. want. Do you, uh, is there thank an... you for not judging. Me. Oh no, this is not the show to judge. Is there an indulgent beer that you like? Like, is there something that you there go sure for? Is, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, um, like IPAs. IPAs. Like, yeah. I, I know. I know. God, I, I caught it. I caught it last guest. time. Yeah. I caught it last time. Like you're like ah, I just every don't get it. show. But every guest. Every, every guest, show every has show. been like, oh, IPAs are great, and we're yeah. like, it tastes like dog shit. No. Like, why would you drink? Why would you put that in your mouth? Because you can't have like. I mean, you can, but uh, like I'll I'll drink I'll drink um, you know two to three of them. You know, and it's like I'm good, man. I'm good. Like then, it's it's man. it's just it's not a it's not an overindulgence type of beer, but uh, it's it's definitely, you know. I tried one the other. It's day. my first. Yeah, because of because of everything that we've been hearing, I like I'm gonna try one. Maybe maybe my taste buds have changed. Maybe they will. I, don't, I cracked it open, and I, the first. What'd you have? I, just, I had one of the Kingsville. The uh, Kingsville. That's a KPA though. Right. Well, it's still an IPA. I think exactly. somebody I don't know whoever talked about IPAs they're like no the KPA is not the same. Yeah. Anyways, but anyway, I took a few sips. Entry level yeah, IPA. I took a few sips and I'm like oh, this isn't so bad. But by like the third and fourth sip I'm like I don't want to finish this. <laughs> mm. like, it's so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. I don't know. I can give you guys some good. You know why that you know why it's uh, beers, but, so uh, bitter like that, right? So I guess like back in the day, the British tried to make beer and ship it over. Yeah. yeah so and by the time it. it would ship over, it would lose all its flavor and be disgusting. So they like super hopped the beer. So that in the journey of, you know, going by boat, it would make it and it would still taste somewhat decent. Yeah. I, I feel like I read something about like the hops uh, being poured into like crates and like yeah. covering the bottles. They were like covering oh, the barrels and stuff and like the hops having such a strong aroma that it would like completely deviate the the security or whoever like from smelling like what's going on in there and like but like the beer would actually carry that flavor with it it would like infuse somehow in there yeah uh, but yeah I'm, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not even sure if i read that high i don't care how it's made it's gross you know what we might have to do it's fucking great it's is great. uh because of every guest that's come on here they've they've been like oh ipas are my thing start buying ipas we should do we should split an ipa every show no fucking way no we get, Sorry, no way. How about one day? No way. How about one day? I'll bring one for you guys to split. That I will get you to change your mind. I would. I would IPAs. try. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Like, you just chase it with a, a real beer. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> I mean, all you I have guys. to do is a sip. I mean, I'll try anything once. I'll do anything once. Well, within reason. I'll do anything once because I know where your mind's going, you fucker. Um, so I'll I'll try anything once. Um, but I uh, so. I don't know, maybe a month ago or something, I had this guy and I said to him, I said, Hey, recommend like eight beers for me. Just pick eight random beers and I'm, I'm going to buy them. I'm going to drink them. I just want to try something new. I might mm. find something I like. And one of the ones that he put in there was an IPA. And I told that guy, I'm like, I don't like IPA. And he just threw it in. And I wasn't really, I didn't really notice. And it was actually, I drank it while we recorded the Joel Bishop uh, episode. Mm. And it was horrible yeah, I remember you, do you remember that yeah you we cut out. that out but oh my god that was the most disgusting thing i've ever tried oh boy and it shocked me too because like you're not expecting it right so you crack this beer and you you take your first swig of it and it's just shit no nah, gross guys IPA no. is like okay fun you bring us one IP, ipa is like uh it's like it's like heroin or, or coke or something like it, it's like I the, think fir- it's... the first one may hurt a bit <laughs> you know but the second one eventually eventually you're just you're fucking downright needing no. it like I, I can get behind the taste at the beginning like that mm-hmm. first hit where it just like messes up your oh. taste buds i don't yeah, i don't mind that it's just by like the third and fourth sip it's like i'm 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 over it like i'm done uh. with this beer I can't, I don't know. I can't drink it. So I'll stick, like for me again, Corona, Guinness, vodka, that's pretty much it. Oh, he, he needs another beer. Yeah. Can you grab yeah, me one too, actually? Yeah, you, you can say that out loud. Yeah, you, it's, a you drink, know, it's a drinking show. It's a drinking show. So <laughs> everybody beer, listening, please. that's right, everyone listening is going to grab another beer too. Hopefully you've made it this far and you can you can drink more with us. And then somewhere in the half point of the show, we do another shot. Beauty. And then at I was the just end, staring at the bottle and I was... Oh, yeah, well, we get pretty I saucy. I mean, I think we've accomplished the... Uh, the professional part of the interview like oh this is what he does this is well yeah i mean <laughs> here here like just to kind of just to kind of like satisfy the ocd in me or the uh, yeah, yeah. cdo as i prefer because <laughs> alphabetical order that's fucking, yeah. exactly exactly anybody who says they're ocd like they're they're true ocd they're fucking lying if they don't call it cdo <laughs> so amazing. but uh you know having having all of this happen um you know, needing a way to uh, kind of open up and and bust out a little more creativity, uh, having a lot of ideas, having a lot of things where it was popping up into my head. Kids are fucking running crazy. Wife is also home, and everybody's just trying to get my attention. I'm just like, shh. 
I have to go downstairs play fucking massive riffs right now. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and I, I gotta leave you. I gotta leave you guys. It's daddy's riff you know, time. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's daddy's riff time. <laughs> like, like, dad's got to go fucking downstairs and, and channel Iomi as much as possible right now. Like, as much as I can. And and then just, like, song after song after song after song. It was, like, sending him off to our drummer. And, and he's just like, fuck, man. This is awesome. I'm like, oh, send me more. Send me more. Like, oh, shit. You're on a roll, man. Fuck. Keep going. Keep going. And it was, like... I wasn't getting stuff back fast enough. I was giving him too much, almost, oh, wow. you know, like overwhelming music. Yeah. And the funny thing was, was most of the songs like had his drums already on it from like an old song, you know, like I pulled old songs into this uh, Pro Tools session and I would just like write riffs on top of these old drums, completely different song, different key, different riff, different timing, um, different groove, all that stuff. And then just fucking be sending them back to him. And then all of a sudden, the goddamn thing, you know, everybody's got shit to do now. Everybody's got fucking problems and, you know, we're all trying to kind of get our own shit in order. And I had no patience. Like, I was just like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> if there's one thing that's going to fucking derail me is, like, musical creative process. Like, right. that's the only thing that'll derail. Like, like everything else in life, like, that gets thrown at me, I can handle it in some compartmentalized way. And, but music like creativity and like creation like if there's a chance that i could just unplug and take a you know go to the cot go to a cottage by myself for three days you know somewhere by uh, like alone you know where i could just write and record i still want to do that stuff like i used to write all the time i'd go to montreal and write all the time and like take a train there and you know write books and stuff and try to fucking get as much information as i possibly could out of my head you know with the least amount of people trying to i saw nothing that, clouding yeah i saw that uh there was that YouTube series that I think you put out or somebody put out about uh, you guys going to a cottage to, when you started yeah. uh, uh, Gypsy Chief. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like right when we started, too. And yeah. and uh, we went to record this album and we went to a cottage out in the middle of fucking Gravenhurst. And it was in like dead of winter, you know, and we went there a couple times and, and just, I mean, you ring out a note, just a chord and like yeah. a heavy, loud <laughs> chord <laughs> you know, on an amp, not an acoustic guitar. Right. In the middle of winter, the lake is all just completely ice and you just, and the glass walls on the back, the walls on the back of the house are just all pure mirror or windows right. right just looking out over the fucking lake and just <laughs> this huge <laughs> you just like you can if if it was a like if sound was a like a like a visual like you could see the fucking the ripple yeah, yeah man like yeah, it was just course. moving it was moving yeah. the whole like shocking the whole fucking lake it was great and i know a lot of bands like we were talking to joel the other day he said that they've been recording a ton of songs now even in quarantine even like How is with joel? the restrictions he's he's doing awesome now yeah, he's doing yeah. He lost, I just talked to him the other day, a couple days ago. He said he lost like 40 pounds or something, 30 pounds. Yeah, yeah I saw So a he looked, oh my God, he looks so different. Mm. So different. But he's like, I had to go Good through him, I had to go through a massive heart surgery to lose the weight. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, okay, fair enough. But yeah. still, yeah, he's doing really good. I think there's something to, like, COVID is not good. There's there's very little good things about it. Very little? Is there any good thing? Well, I think the one good thing is that some people have had some time that they slow haven't. Slow down life. Yeah, they've slowed, slowed, slowed down and they've been able to think about what really means something to them. Yeah. And what they really want to do. Yeah. And they've actually had some time to actually explore that. So yeah. it's not a good of COVID. It's a good byproduct of COVID. It's, yeah, exactly. It's like nothing about COVID is right. good. But the, <laughs> the resulting, uh, so even people who had to work every day. You go home and there's nothing to do. There's no place to go. You right. can't go. You, there's no friends to see. You, you I had the most money. There was a yeah. lot of video I had the games. Most money ever. Like <laughs> yeah. these last three months. I think I you drank. Yourself, I drank a little bit more. Not maybe not more, but just more frequently. Because like it, before, you'd go to a pub or a bar or whatever late at night, and and you drink. I don't know, 10 or something, right? But then you wouldn't drink for like two or three days after and then you, a bunch right. of your friends would go out again. I think I drank more consecutively, just less. I was going to say, yeah. more consistently, like it's almost every like night. one or two beers a night. Whatever work I have to do, as soon as I'm done, I crack a beer. Yeah. Video games was like the number one thing I did and I'm still doing it. You're not on as much, but... Well. I mean, I never really played before. I started playing because of COVID. I yeah. had nothing else to do. So I just... Yeah, like, and, you know, you're just saying about slowing things down, spending time with your family, or or, <laughs> or play video or games. Or locking myself in the room and playing <laughs> video games, yeah. Do you do that? Do you play? I do. I do. Uh, more retro stuff, though. Oh. Um, some new stuff, 
but not like so we wouldn't catch you on call of duty or no 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 fair enough um we need a fourth squad member so if you're ever interested it's free it's free if you want to download it but yeah yeah. it's free if you have a playstation or xbox yeah i have no idea whatever i'm a playstation guy i don't know yeah Yeah. xbox sucks (laughs) so what what arcade games like what retro games um like pac-man and yeah, so Donkey Kong, uh, the Mario Brothers. Uh, so regular Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, I'd say okay. regular Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Also Game Boy Advanced in the, uh, and I have arcade machines. So I had uh, Blades of Steel. Oh no the, way! The arcade, and uh, I had Die Hard, the arcade, and um, I put a Game Elf in that one, and so it changed it from like a like a one off game to like six hundred, you know, different games, and uh, and then I had and it's all in the stand up. Yeah, like arcade. Yeah. yeah, 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 in the garage, and nice. then I have a uh, Mortal Kombat two oh. stand up arcade machine. That's awesome. Why right? are we not doing the show at his yeah, house? I know, right? house. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Um, I think we did. We mention I don't know if we talked about this on air about our favorite games, but I, I remember like Paperboy, uh, Battle Toads. Those were like one of my favorite. Yeah, uh, I know my brother like Star Tropics. That was like one of his favorite games. Um, but it was all regular Nintendo stuff, mm-hmm. like old, old, old games. Yeah. 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 And then same with N sixty four, yeah, sixty four, like then Mario, Golden Eye, Golden Eye, yeah, Mario Party, yeah. Mario Kart. It's just Mario sixty four. I don't remember what was that one. It was Mario the the first three D yeah. Mario where you could like when he with... wasn't like a flat side scrolling yeah. character. He right. slides on his belly down the grass. Yeah, <laughs> really? I'd have to I have to YouTube. You'd remember? It. To I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. It's like a back ass view. It's hard to remember. So is it really? So like uh, Mario's butt. Like the what's that game? Temple Run or something on your phone? The same thing. Yeah, You're yeah. looking at his ass and you you had to jump like yeah yeah, yeah so right. same. So there, I yeah. wanted to talk to you about. You said you met you met um, Phil from Pantera, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, did you find like was it a, okay? So I met I met Phil Labonte from All That Remains okay. when I went to Vegas, right? I hung out with him. Not the same thing. No, no, no. <laughs> well, hang on. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> Not the same Phil. Different Phil. Uh, but I hung out with him, Randy Couture, like a bunch of the Black oh, Rifle nice. Coffee yeah, yeah. guys. They're nice. all there. So I hung out with a lot of these guys. And I mean, I've listened to All That Remains for fucking for years, and I have them on playlists and you know gym workouts and stuff like that's really aggressive shit so i wanted to ask you when you met phil was it a different like did you have a uh, a different impression when i met phil from all that remains nothing changed it was just like really? another dude i was drinking with same with randy Thanks, couture man. hung out with that guy for for a few hours and it was just like i don't know it's not like a celebrity to me it was just kind of like hanging out with another dude that like drinking and partying having a good time yeah did you have the same experience, or was it different? It was. It was different. Was it? I thought it was going to be more like that. Yeah. I was hoping it was going to be more like that. Just chill. I really thought it was going to be chill. Yeah. I wanted it to be chill. But and uh, what happened was, it was like it was the first slap in my. So when we got down there, we didn't get brought back by Phil. Like it was Jimmy Bauer, the drummer. Okay. From down. Yeah. Right? So it was down that down was playing. Was such a fucking good band. <laughs> fucking gold. Even worse because every single member is like a massive right. influence, right? Like on on their person, like who equal band member, right? Like yeah. with like instrumentation. So uh, Jimmy Bauer, I like I go, I'm I'm with my wife or my go, my girlfriend at the time, and I'm like knocking on the bus door. And I'm like, and she's like, "What are you gonna say?" And I was like, "Oh fuck, well, I don't know." Uh, oh yeah yeah six degrees six degrees i always revert back to the six degrees so these guys being from new orleans like phil ensemble being from new orleans and like uh, pepper keenan and all these guys and kirk winstein um only guy i think that wasn't was rex at the time that was he was from texas right but he was in pantera at the time so or was so we're at the bus we knock on the door a guy opens the door and i know it's the tour manager i know it just he doesn't look like anybody in a band like right, he's just right. like he's like a, a square yeah and uh so he, he, he like he fucking he, he opens up the door and he's like hey can i help you and uh, i was like hey man what's going on man what's your name and he's like oscar and i'm like hey oscar uh do you know is jimmy on the bus he's like yeah jimmy's at the back and like i'm like hey J- can you tell jimmy that uh, al's here uh he played and toured with the band suplex from new orleans uh, I just want to smoke some weed with him. And like he's like, all right, just give me a second. And so he goes back to the bus, end of the bus, and he's like, Jimmy, uh, some guy fucking whatever, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, yada, yada, wants to fucking, you know, fuck yeah. You know, and so like Jimmy comes out of the bus, like walks down, and he comes out, and he's like, who here knows Danny from Suplex? And I'm like, oh, that's me, Jimmy. And like that was the first time I was 21 at the time. Holy like, 21 shit. 21 years old when, he, like, when we met. And, um, and, and Phil, just to give you an idea, Phil ended up being 35 that year. Like, like he was 35 years old. So it's like, that's like the difference in age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking nuts. And, um, 
and so we're we're there we we're just babies man like and uh and and so jimmy like he's he's like who who here knows danny from suplex and the story was was like six months prior we had played two shows with a band called suplex from new orleans and i during the windsor show when we were playing at coach uh danny from suplex who's from new orleans like yeah. he he says to me he's like, he's like hey man like you know anybody who's got any weed he's like fuck no man like my drummer does but he's at home now like after we played, he left. Like he's one of those assholes, like who just like <laughs> leaves and goes home. Right? Why does everyone pick on the drummer? I know. Man. So, <laughs> Fuck I'm, you I'm know. sorry, Mikey. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so he, uh, so, so me and Dan, me and, me and Dan water. ends up, uh, me and Dan, me and Dan ends up going. Uh, we we end up getting in my car. We drive across the city, uh, across town. We go to my buddy's, our drummer's house. I knock on his window. Hey man, you got any weed? If I can get us the weed, and like ends up, we end up going back. So we have this like cool, elaborate story, you know, where I'm like hanging with Danny, and Danny's telling me while we're smoking in the car now at the parking lot down <laughs> by the coach, he's telling me I used to play guitar. Um, I used to take lessons from Kirk Winstein from down in Crowbar in New Orleans, and I used to jam in Jimmy Bauer's basement, like at his parents' house and stuff, like when I Hate God was starting and all this stuff, like we used to all jam down there. Like, it's like so he knew these guys on an intimate, no, like knowledgeable wow. level, right? So I took that information. And so when <laughs> my wife and I were at Used the down it. show, when we were at the down show <laughs> yeah. for the first time, we went and I tapped nice. on that fucking bus door and I asked for Jimmy Bauer and like they like gave me Jimmy Bauer and like I said like hey man like yeah I know Danny like we played two shows like uh, uh, yeah. Windsor and London or it was Windsor and Hamilton or something and uh, and he told me all this stuff and he's like yeah man that's true man that's crazy man that's crazy and like Jesus. he's like you want to come downstairs man like and I know that like my wife being there helped the situation yeah. oh of course you know so it was like he's like you want to come, you guys want to come downstairs like so we were downstairs we're totally starstruck at this point like rex is down there pepper's down there kirk's down there jimmy's down there and we're like rolling now fucking joints with hash and uh just like ready to smoke them in the opera house basement you know and like there's like nobody there yet like there's nobody upstairs at all yet and uh and then it was all of a sudden like we're like we're about to smoke and then i heard this voice like we were like so starstruck like keep in mind we were there for yeah. like 20 minutes already drinking waters and sitting on a couch with down no phil did not even think about phil at that point though because i was so like struck yeah on the fact that we were yeah. down there fucking moments later though like we're like we're sitting on the couch and uh we hear this voice from the back and it's like, hey, anybody getting high back there <laughs> Better think about coming back here and getting me high. Like, you know, it was just like this, like weird voice, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, like I just look at my wife, like we're just like shitting ourselves. Like we knew it was Phil, and it was just like completely thought that he was out of limits. You weren't allowed to hang with him. So, but then what happened was, it was like, it was like, ah, oh, you better not like. You know, like Pepper, like who doesn't smoke weed? He was like, he's like, I better not fucking let him go. Let, you know, don't let him wait. Don't let him wait. You know, you better go back there and smoke weed with him. So we go and like we grab our weed and like Jimmy follows and like we end up going back there and we just hang out and it's just my wife, myself, Jimmy, and Phil and we're smoking weed and he's like, he's like, you remember that time? And he's like talking to Jimmy at the time. He's like, you remember that time that we were playing uh, in Detroit? at Ozfest and we didn't we ended up coming here the next day because that chick I was banging her backstage and that chick she just grabbed my eyes real hard and just <laughs> grabbed it and ripped my retina right out like that while we were fucking like so like I'm like like we're like we're smoking joints while he's while he's telling this story out loud and I'm like that fuck I look at my wife I'm like uh, we're 21 so I'm like thinking that makes so much sense because we were there <laughs> at the show when they were supposed to play with System of a Down. Do you remember that? We were supposed to watch them play in Hamilton and they didn't go on. Do you remember that? And then we went to that bar. That's we why. saw Rex. We, we met Rex and Kirk and like Rex was like, because like we like months prior to this show, like meeting Phil, we had met them. Oh, okay. We were oh, supposed yeah, to go yeah. see this show and this show never like amounted to anything. It was like Mashuga and like, oh. System of, uh, System of a Down. And Down was supposed to go on between Meshuggah and, and System of... Uh, it was like uh, these bands that were kind of traveling during the time of Ozfest when like one show is like got like two or three days before the next one. 
So then a bunch of bands get together who have the same uh, record or yeah. touring touring yeah, yeah. management, and then they put them on. So they put Mishuga Down and System of a Down on a show. That's a fucking on a bunch of tour, show. like on a bunch of shows. <laughs> so Down Down ends up uh, bailing on like the the Hamilton show, the Cops Coliseum show in like 2002. They couldn't do it. Uh, it was 21, 22 years old, something like that. And uh, and so, but the guys were still there. They were still at the show, which blew my mind because like they were because Phil and Pepper were in a hospital in Michigan. Um, getting treated in Columbus, Ohio. Sorry, not Michigan, Ohio. They were getting treated there, like for like a like a retina scrape. Jesus, you know, which was like <laughs> like legit common, common <laughs> knowledge. But then, like almost a year, like half a year later, Fuck. like we find out and like in the, the real truth. the truth, like what happened. You know, this guy like Just crazy yeah. sex. Yeah. So and nice. then we sit there, and uh, I remember Jimmy ends up leaving, and then it was just me, my wife, and Phil, and we're just hanging out. <laughs> And it was just us three. And we were there for about two hours backstage. And it was like a couple people. Like, so he was so fucked up at the time. This goes back to like your question, like where he's, you know. It, basically, it, it, was, it wasn't what I expected meeting, meeting him. It was like I had like thought, oh, my God, you know, like getting this opportunity to meet them. It was like the craziest thing. But then yeah. getting to spend that time with Phil, uh, I knew all of a sudden that he's like, on like dependencies like yeah he's on methadone he was telling me afterwards he's like he's like i'm taking this methadone right now it makes me walk through fucking walls man it walk makes me walk into walls you know it's like i don't fucking feel right you know and like he's just talking about like this whole thing and he's like his eyes are so it changed, like he, he looks like the undertaker it changed right. your like perception of him kind of yeah, yeah like yeah, it yeah. made me realize yeah. it made me realize that like what he's dealing with on a day-to-day basis to play music Music is like it's a part of his life. That's great, right. but it's his structure and regimen on a daily basis is not made and not designed for him to optimally make music like the best he can make it at that point. It was just like it was a part of his life. Drugs was a part of his life. Recovery was a part of his life. Meeting people was a part of his life. All this stuff was going on, and nothing was fucking forming itself nothing was forming itself to like everything was just like just this way or that way that like like everything was just constant 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 nothing was structured in a way where like he could handle it okay so this new let's get into this new stuff so you're doing the age of wolves Mm -hmm. and like when did you get into that what got you into that so these guys i had no uh no no desire to start another band right i was fine with that and then like kind of do my own thing whatever uh, then Mike Edwards, a buddy of mine, uh, who was a singer from Lowdown, one of my favorite bands growing up, like in the music scene in Windsor. Um, these guys were one of those bands that were like, oh, man, like when you hear them, like you're like, Jesus Christ, like these guys know what they're doing. They could make it. Right. Why aren't they big? None of it makes sense. You know what I mean? And then you start to realize like the music scene is a fucking cruel and dirty world and nobody gives a fuck about you know, you got to lie and cheat. And yeah. You got to do as much as you can, you know, at least at that time. Now it's, it's probably more the luck of the draw, you know, way more of that. And, and maybe even at that time too, but it was just, unfortunately, some of the best bands in the world will never get heard. will never get seen. will never get known. And so uh, that's the internet though. That's totally internet the, opened, you know, dimensions, like, what, was Justin Bieber was like found by Usher by just playing on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like a lot more bands have more, uh publicity then for yeah, sure back for sure the, so yeah. there's like it's a double-edged sword for sure right you get all this stuff and then uh, well because because you like you don't get no, like you're you saying think, it's harder to get noticed now or easier to get noticed now i mean sorry it's it's just a different game yes uh, i guess yeah as compared to what as to never being signed never being like noticed never being you know working as hard like Having that, like, uh, the pipe dream. Well, back in the day, you had to, like, you had to cut a CD, send it to the A&R guy. Yeah. And, like, just hope to God they would listen to it or see you at a live show or something. And now you can just put a TikTok song on or go on YouTube and, you know, film yourself on YouTube and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And you're good to go. Well, I think the structure or the, 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 the process of listening to music has probably been devalued in some oh, of course. In some f- frame or whatever people in this generation will never know what it's like going to a record store 
getting that CD or that vinyl or whatever, and then opening the plastic and oh. putting it on for the first time. Now it's just like, I'm going to download it to my phone and then in a month I'm going to delete it. Being yeah. at a Black Sabbath concert and having like, like, okay, so like they're playing Snowblind right now and I'm like fucking crying. Yeah. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm in <laughs> tears. And the guy, be, the guy in front of me on the hill, fucking long hair, no shirt on, turns around and he's like, hey, brother. And he fucking gives me the biggest hug and he's like, who this and <laughs> fucking passes me a joint and it was just like they won't know that stuff they won't know any of that shit yeah. what like what that human contact a man yeah you know all of that stuff being at a show with thousands of people and then hugging some stranger yeah you know shirtless yeah. stranger yeah, yeah yeah and then and then sharing a dube or whatever it's like it's like ah, i don't yeah. know man i don't know we've, if they can do that we've been to a few shows i've been to a few corn shows too yeah. and like you know but i don't know i i don't know if like the whole like concert thing has changed but back in the day, I would go to a show like Family Values in 98. Yeah. So I went to that show. I was young. But like you go to that show and you're in a room with, you know, 15,000 other people. And there's a bunch of people on the main floor and they're all sweaty and shirtless and jumping yeah. and smashing into each other. And you're just like, OK, this is disgusting for me. It was disgusting. <laughs> yeah. But like that, that, uh, that experience, you'll never get again. No, no, you won't. You won't. Like the, the. It changed. I think the flu, everything's the changed. The flu thing, the, the flu, the virus, whatever you want to call it, it, it's, it, it, it completely changed it all. It's like that smell of being in a stadium where there's like just these rush of people starting to yeah. come in minute by minute, hour by hour, that place yeah. is starting to s- smell oh, differently. Yeah. differently. <laughs> and it's like... Not for the better. Right. No, but who, cares? who cares? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's unforgettable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like this, this moment where it's like, you know, we're all just connected to this one device that's outputting right. this music yeah. like, to us everybody's and, watching the same yeah, people man. and we're all just kind of interpreting what's happening and it's like so i gotta steer you back towards age of wolves do it um you, you've got some you brought us a cd here yeah you've got a couple songs on there i got four songs the first four i think are of that and then the other are of uh, conduit beast it's i don't know what it's called conduit beast is like um either the solo project or the name of the record of the solo project so like the solo project is either Ali Bones with Conduit Beast that's the name of the album but Age feel- of Wolves is the first four songs on there how do you feel about us listening to a couple of those would love it yeah yep yep let's do that
something else on? Yeah. Uh, Conduit Beast. I'll put on that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something there. Tales from the Iron Side. Watch out. This song turned out really cool.
Holy oh, fuck, dude. That was the fucking, power. Yeah. The fucking wow. power of that song. Oh, yeah. Jesus I love Christ. that. Like, I, I love the fucking... <laughs> the, like, the... I, I'm just I'm a doom like metal fan. Like the rawness, fan. yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I, just, I love that uh, that like whiskey rock, that doom metal. Yes. Yeah. No. It, Thank uh, you for the tracks, though. Th- yeah. Fuck, man. Uh, uh, listen to them in good health. Of course. Absolutely. Well, I mean, what else? How else never, can you do it? That's it. All right. So before we end the show, if they want to get you on socials, how are they going to get you on social? They just need to uh, search Al Yeti Bones A L capital A <laughs> capital L capital Y. <laughs> Lowercase E T I. You sound like B- the uh, O N E S movie phone guy. Al Yeti Bones. That's... So common spelling. <laughs> Al I'm Yeti sorry. Bones. But honestly, like um, anything that I remember, uh, social media wise. Uh, was Do you all... have all of them? You have Instagram. Well, yeah. I mean, I got. I, I, so the ones that I, I normally use for like uh, more of like the fitness and like more of like the podcasting and the blogging stuff is Instagram. Uh, and also selfies. That's huge. You're a big selfie guy. No, I'm not. Only when <laughs> only when I go running. Only when I go running. It's I like, saw it's that like, 14 mile run like, thing oh, that dude, you did. Dude. Yeah, like, it's the biggest thing. Like like so this summer I'm gonna do 100. 107. Miles. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 100 miles in seven days. Yeah. Fucking hell. That's yeah. Insane. So today I put down five miles again. So I don't know, man. I don't know how it's gonna be possible. I think I think in the end I have to go. I gotta go 10 every day. Well, it's 14.2 at least. At least if 10. you want to do 107, yeah. it's like 14.2 or something. Yeah, so at, like at least 10 though. I want to do each day miles, not kilometers. Miles, miles. Yeah, and then at least on two or three of those days, I need to double that. Jesus. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. It. I'm gonna like 10. 10 is like 10 on a daily basis is like easy to do. I can yeah. probably make that happen if I push myself for seven days. Why the fuck not? Everybody can do anything they want. I ran eleven days. feet uh, from my door to my car to <laughs> grab Jesus something out Christ. of the car, <laughs> and I had to take I had to take a shower just to rinse off because I was so sweaty. It took me a hundred minutes to fucking rinse off this eleven foot. <laughs> so socials, yeah, just search Al the Yeti Bones, Al the Yeti Bones, right. or Al Yeti Bones, and then Age yeah. of Wolves too. Age of Wolves is a private Facebook group, which is the coolest thing nowadays. Is it, I'm going to throw this out there right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, it is not something that I think is a known thing, but it's the new fad. It's the new in. It's the new thing that all the kids are doing. Um, Private. Yeah, man. So you do like, uh, so before it was like a band profile on Facebook. Like you open up a band page, you know, and then Facebook started fucking with the algorithms and they started saying like, oh, without advertisement, we can't have you guys like be infiltrating all these people's well of course they want your money they want their money you know yeah. so like we're gonna throw it up on the sides you know and stuff so it won't interrupt people's feeds you know so people are having a hard time following these local bands they're not getting all the information what makes it cool is is that you're doing this uh private group you know where it's like just like a private page like like an invite only invite only yeah. you know thing and so like it's like this private page invite only you hang out there all the stuff is in there, and you you get like the information, the content on your page, the way the way it needs to come out. Um, but the beauty of it all is, is that you know it's this ex- exclusivity that kind of makes it uh, feed. Nice. Age of Wolves, Al Yeti Bones, <laughs> yeah. kind of a beast. Yeah, I search mean, any of it. Gypsy Chief, uh, GCG, Al Yeti Bones in studio here. We got to get this last shot here. So Al, honestly, thank you, man. We appreciate you coming in. Um, you know, hanging out with us. This is two weeks in a row now you've been in here. Oh, man, that's crazy. <laughs> Hopefully you come back eventually. Yeah, I'm going to uh, pitch a tent. I'm going to pitch a tent <laughs> in the backyard. So. <laughs> Occupy studio. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, thank you for coming in. Thanks for sharing the songs with us, hanging out with us, giving us some, some pretty cool shit to talk about. It was really fun. Thanks for we giving me you. some pretty cool shit to uh, hang with. I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It, so thank here you. we go. All the dudes, awesome. dudettes, everybody listening, grab those shots. Here we go. This is the final show shot, everybody. Cheers. 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 Cheers.